I have a special guest here tonight, my wife, Natalie. We're going to talk to her about her experiences, stories, and uh, just her, her side of uh, the hunting experience overall. So um, her, uh, her dad introduced her at a young age, and I got a little taste, uh, not, not anything uh, at uh, my level or Joey's. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, what, uh, what do you, what do you got to say? Uh, how, how'd you get into it? And, um, and, and why do you still, uh, why do you still do it today? Well, first off, thank you for having me on the episode. It only took 13 episodes for yes. you to allow your wife to be in front of the camera. <laughs> um, yeah, so my hunting journey, um, I went hunting for the first time. I was probably about 12 years old and my dad took me out, I believe it was muzzleloader season. Um, I didn't have a gun or anything. Um, we were up north, uh, kind of past the Longville, Minnesota area. And he took me out one morning and just had me sit on a bucket next to him uh, for a few hours. And uh, nothing happened. So it was pretty boring. Wow. I didn't really know what was going on. Uh, and that is the first time I went hunting. Wow. Uh, and I did not do it again for 10 more years. Wow. So saw nothing, just uh, sat out there, uh, looked around. Fun to be with your dad. Yeah, it was, it was a, a fun experience, but I didn't really understand what, what was, was going, going on. on or what we were doing. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, so fast forward uh, 10 years. Um, so I was 21 years old and met you. Mm-hmm. Um, and we actually, our first date was right at the very end of hunting season. So I think it was two weeks after rifle season ended mm -hmm. was our first date, November 30th of 2012. Mm -hmm. Um, so we went on our first date and, uh, of course you talked about your love for hunting, uh, for a good chunk of our dinner, uh, that night. Um, and so obviously the rest is history since we've been married now 10 years. Uh, but what happened after that first date is you kind of talked about hunting and talked more about hunting and we dated and, you know, 10 months later or nine months later, we were coming up into the fall of 2013. Mm -hmm. So I had never actually really hunted myself, um, besides that one experience with my dad. So I did the hunter safety course. Yeah. Um, well, I, I told you initially, like, we don't have to do this together, right? Like, we can, you know, uh, take our separate paths. But, um, but yeah, you, you really wanted to uh, join me, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah. Um, I've always been kind of the believer that uh, spouses should have um, activities they like to do together mm -hmm. and activities they like to do separately. Yeah. Um, but there should be some like compromise there and they should at least give a try to each other's interests. So, um, I didn't, I wasn't fully committing <laughs> at this point to doing anything. Uh, I was going to do the hunter safety and I was going to go with try it a, a day or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so at this point I hadn't really necessarily committed to a whole lot, but, um, wanted to give it a try. Yep. So I did hunter safety I'll never forget that uh, I was the oldest one when I had to go test out, and I was yeah, super nervous. I remember that. So with all these twelve-year-olds, and uh, there I am, twenty-two years old at that point, and um, got all nervous to to test out and, and shoot the gun in front of the instructor. So, um, <laughs> so I think I tested out and completed hunter safety. I want to say in like September, mm -hmm. and then uh, you brought me to my first deer camp ever. Then that November, yeah. My uncle's um, place had never had a woman there, so uh, it was a milestone. Yeah, I was the first woman uh, allowed uh, up there at the boxcar uh, hunting camp. You can um, follow for more photos. I'm sure you you guys have seen uh, seen the photos of the boxcar. Yeah, so thank you to uh, Uncle Lynn and uh, Blaine for letting uh, me join. And um, I got to experience the whole Minnesota deer camp. Mm -hmm. um, so that in itself I could talk about for a long time because there are so many deer camp traditions that I just had no idea yeah. were such a big deal. Um, so that in itself was just eye-opening. Uh, but that year I went out with you the first day. Mm -hmm. um, and we both brought our rifles. Uh, and I sat in the same stand as you just to kind of get a feel 
uh, for how it was and, and what was happening. Um, and uh, you spotted a spike um, and we're trying to get a shot off. And then I actually got the spike in my crosshairs and wanted to take a shot. But at that point, I was pretty nervous. Um, and I think you were a little nervous too of me messing up the shot. Yeah. So you said you would take the shot. So, uh, you took the shot and we, you know, kind of together got, I mean, it wasn't my first deer. I don't get credit for it, but it was the first time that I had really been there and been on a hunt and very cool. Like, yeah. That was saw awesome. a successful hunt and, you know, experienced camp and experienced what it was like. Uh, so that was really exciting. Yeah. Um, I know, uh, then after that, I was, uh, in my own stand from there on out. I never sat with you again. Yeah. We, we, uh, we kind of, we kind of are solo now. Um, yeah, we'd like to be together, but we, yeah. uh, we're more efficient hunters. We, uh, split up and mm -hmm. it works out really well that way. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, fast forward a couple of years. So I've hunted every year, uh, since 2013. Yeah. How, how many bucks have you taken now? Um, I have taken nine deer. Nine deer. Wow. wow. Yeah. And I think that would be 11, no, 10 seasons. I've 10 seasons. Wow. Um, so that would include the deer that I took in Montana. So I do have one mule deer mm -hmm. uh, from Montana. Um, so yeah, uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah. Uh, still don't have a monster buck. Uh, I'm working my way up. Um, I think part of what I've learned is you know, when I started hunting at 22, that was pretty equivalent to most people that start hunting when they're 12. Mm -hmm. So I've been just as excited over, you know, a spike um, or a doe as like most, you know, kids would be. Yeah. Uh, Cause it's been my first year, my experience. So mm -hmm. um, the first year I ever took was actually a, a spike or I mean, maybe like a baby fork. <laughs> I, I like to give my forks credit, uh, since I don't really have anything bigger. So, um, I count every little point on there, uh, to give them credit. Yeah. That was a cool story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll never forget that. Uh, you know, having the deer jump the fence and, uh, it took a 300 yard shot and was successful. Mm -hmm. So I've learned a lot of things since hunting. And, uh, one thing I've learned is, uh, well, two things I learned pretty quick is you shouldn't be taking 300 yard shots most of the time. Know the, know, know what your rifle can do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was really lucky, uh, that I got that deer at 300 yards. There was definitely luck uh, involved in that. Um, also my first couple seasons, I didn't realize that you shouldn't be taking shots at running deer. Yeah. Um, so actually I can really credit the majority of my learning besides from you at an early stage actually was from meat eater from steve ranella yep so what i like about the show meat eater or just watching steve ranella in general is he shows uh what happens when you miss um failure yep he shows the failure uh and he also shows passing on shots and i think i really learned <laughs> you know, that I should be passing on bad shots from watching, I mean, those first couple of years we watched like the first eight seasons of Meat Eater. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I was able to really understand, you know, he doesn't do a ton of whitetail hunting in Meat Eater, but it's, it's all very similar. So watching all the mule deer hunting he does, that's kind of one of his big things. Mm -hmm. um, and just being like, the deer's right there, why isn't he shooting? And hearing him talk about like, okay, it's too far, or there's too much wind, or there's something blocking his view, or, you know, the deer isn't stopping. Um, I definitely learned a lot from that. And yeah. um, I would say after probably about my third season, um, I've really become what I would consider to be like a-, a Veteran hunter? Or, yeah, a pretty yeah. good, like mature um, seasoned hunter. Like I, I'm not, making dumb mistakes you're taking dumb yeah you've, shots ta you've taken some coyotes now and uh the most recent is the uh really nice uh, minnesota black bear yes yes this year I'll, i drew my first black bear tag um in minnesota and uh got about a 350 pound uh 
fair, which was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, that will probably have to be a story for another episode. Yeah. I think that's a story in its own. But uh, yeah, I, I really have enjoyed bear hunting. Um, I really enjoyed coyote hunting, uh, deer hunting. Um, it's all been We've a had lot a lot of fun, fun together. Yeah. yeah, I've tried my hand at grouse hunting. I've only got one birds. grouse. But yeah. yeah, grouse hunting, I'm not near as good with a shotgun. Um, moving objects, shotguns, they're just a lot harder. Uh, yeah, some me. people's minds don't, it just doesn't work, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so um, I definitely am a pretty confident rifle hunter at this point. Um, I shoot a 243 uh, Savage Axis. Um, it's, I love it. It's the hot pink and purple camouflage. Um, it was one of the first gifts you ever bought me. Mm. So uh, that gun is pretty special to me. Um, I've taken all my deer and all my coyotes with that. Um, I did not bear hunt with it, too low caliber really to safely bear hunt. So yeah, um, borrowed your 270 for that uh, this year. But otherwise, yeah, really uh, enjoy rifle hunting and have a lot of stories. So I'm excited to- Yeah, we can keep sharing them. Come back and, and talk uh, again on here. Yeah. Um, but just wanted to kind of tell you guys, yeah, how I started hunting and and inspiration you know. for wives and, and yeah. girlfriends and yeah I guess I'll end with the fact that every year you've told me that I don't need to hunt um and every year I've wanted to hunt more and more mm -hmm. um so I'm not doing it to please you I'm doing it because I really like it and it's a personal journey for yeah sure. I'm a very competitive person I get very competitive with myself mm -hmm. so challenging myself to be able to do more and do bigger things is really cool that's one of the um, things I love about hunting. It's just me and nature. It's, it, it's, it's fun. Yeah. And the experiences, they're just unlike any other. Um, you can't really describe how it is to be fully engulfed in nature, mm -hmm. uh, to somebody that hasn't experienced it. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, harvesting an animal is just one, one aspect of that. Yeah. Um, you know, and then I obviously love all the time I get to spend with you, and mm. I love the deer camp traditions we have. And a lot of fun. Yeah, just everything is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So, um, thank you guys for tuning in to Woods and Whitetails, and I'm sure you'll be uh, seeing more of me in the future. Thank all right. you for hosting. Thank you.